And welcome to the 1230 BZ3 breakout. Welcome to the conference, everybody. Uh, today we have a, our guest speaker will be uh, Kenny Allwine. He's five years of extensive experience in virtual worlds with uh, SCORM learning management systems, including integrated uh, SCORM into uh, multiple virtual world, world platforms. Kenny has developed multiple virtual world training scenarios and simu simulations utilizing the latest technology of Open Simulator. He has a BS in computer science and an MS in management information systems from the University of Mary Washington. He's also a senior software engineer at Tech Wizards and an adjunct professor at the University of Mary Washington. Please give a warm welcome to Kenny Elwine. Thank you, Dave. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to uh, using open source frameworks to create an intelligent bot in Open Simulator. Um, so, so to start off, here's our agenda for this afternoon. Um, go over a brief introduction. Dave did a great job of, of telling you who I am, so I'll probably skip some of those slides. Um, and then I'll give you a brief overview of a bot. Um, probably sure most of you know what a bot is, but just in case, we'll go over that a little bit. And then we'll go over the technology that we're using for these bots, and then discuss some of the future possibilities that bots allow us to have. And then finally, uh, any questions? And hopefully, there's a lot of questions, and we can we can get into some technical discussions if you'd like. Uh, and I'll try to leave a little bit extra time for discussion at the end. So as Dave said, uh, I've been doing virtual worlds uh, for a while now, and uh, the reason that we have been using um, bots is because primarily what I'm doing is uh, is learning technology uh, using virtual worlds and using virtual worlds to teach. Um, so bots help me uh, help me do that with with the company that, that I work for, um, and that that is Tech Wizards. And the reason I'm going into this is because primarily what Tech Wizards is focused on doing, and what I've been doing for Tech Wizards with the team is uh, using virtual worlds doing training development and, uh, and really using open source solutions so that we can provide a, a great uh, benefit to both virtual worlds and to the end user. Uh, so we've done some virtual worlds uh, using these bots for uh, NavAir, NavC, and, and the US Air Force. And uh, I'm probably not going to go into much detail about those builds during this talk, but if you have any questions, uh, please see me afterwards. Um, but I, this is kind of just a background as to why um, why this was developed and why we're using bots. Um, so now to the, the important part of the talk, um, what's a bot? Um, and then as well as what's a bot, what, what's intelligence? Um, because in the beginning we said that we're going we're gonna to create an intelligent bot, um, but what does that mean? And then finally, why do I need a bot? Uh, so first off, what's a bot? So when we're talking bot, we typically mean that it's automated. So it's something that can act on its own, um, doesn't require interaction from us, and can can do what it wants um, and what it's programmed to do. Um, also, in our case, we want our bot to look like an avatar. We don't want the user to realize um, that they're inter interacting with a bot. So we want them to look just like you or I. Um, and then that allows the, the user to be able to suspend their their uh, their disbelief. Um, useful. So we, we probably want the bot to be useful. Sometimes you might not want a bot to be useful. Um, there's plenty of, of reasons for that to occur. Uh, maybe you're trying to implement uh, something that causes noise. Um, but most of the time, we want our bot to be useful. Uh, we don't want to just take up space. Um, serving a purpose. Uh, that's goes along with useful. Uh, so we, w we usually have a purpose in mind for our bot to be serving, and that, uh, that's the reason for creating this bot. And, and finally, a bot can mean a lot of things. Uh, in our case, a bot is an automated intelligent agent that we're using in the virtual world uh, to help with our, our, either our scenario or our virtual um, training situation.
So intelligence. Uh, intelligence is very hard to define. I'm sure uh, most of you would agree with that. Uh, so one of the things that we're constantly striving for and one of the things that we're getting closer and closer to is, is the Turing test. So for those of you that aren't familiar with the Turing test, uh, it's, it's based off of um, a test that was introduced by Alan Turing in the 1950s. And it's basically um, trying to understand the question of can machines think? Um, and, and thinking and intelligence is very hard to define, as we know. Uh, so, is it possible for us to create a bot that passes the Turing test? And by passing the Turing test, we mean, can it act like a user, look like a user, as we talked about earlier, but can it act like a user and, and, and communicate with everybody so that the users aren't sure whether it's a bot or if it's an actual user. And that's what we're trying to, to achieve with this bot that we're, we're talking about today. Um, another part of intelligence is, uh, is it giving you the information you need? So it's one thing to just uh, be able to fool people into thinking that you're a real person, but are you getting the information from the bot that is pertinent, that's relevant, and uh, isn't just some canned response that could still trick the user, but at least it you know, it's just not sure. So that's part of intelligence. Um, teaching. So we want to be able to teach the bot either um, through us as the administrators or from the actual uh, users that they're interacting with. So that's that's something that you know, if if you're intelligent, you can you can you can teach things and you can also learn. And that's the next point. So the bot needs to be able to teach things and he needs to be able to learn things. And that is kind of going a little bit past the Turing test, but to, to us, that is what intelligence is. So, uh, why do I need a bot? Uh, I guess my first my first question to that is, do you? Um, there's plenty of examples, and I'll show you some screenshots in a second of of when we've used a bot. Um, Primarily, we've used them to teach asynchronous courseware and classes. So uh, we've created uh, a classroom instruction, and we'll have a bot teach that class. So the bot knows everything it needs to know. Um, it may have answers to some of the questions that students will ask, and it will walk around and behave like a, a classroom instructor. Um, and it can teach an asynchronous class, and that allows us to do training that uh, students can come in and get 24-7. 365, and we don't need an instructor present. Um, this is a little bit more uh, realistic, and uh, it, it provides a little bit better um, access to certain functions that we can go into uh, later that, um, that might not be possible with just scripted params. Um, and then also, uh, we, we, we use the bot to demonstrate future possibilities. So we might integrate um, something that, you know, might not be fully um, bot-like, we'll say, but at least it demonstrates a future capability, and that will allow... Um, that's, that's something that you, you might not be able to do with, uh, without a bot. So I guess the question is, uh, you all are probably familiar with the NPC functionality in OpenSim. If you're not, I highly recommend that you look it up. Um, and with that, uh, there's a lot of stuff that you, you can do, and it's great. Um, so sometimes you might not need a bot if you don't need intelligence, uh, if you don't need some of the features that we're, we're discussing now, then maybe an NPC is the way to go. Um, it's easier on the server, and uh, there's, there's a lot of good reasons not to use a bot. But I will say there's a lot of good reasons to use a bot. Um, and one of the things is it's, it's ultimately extensible. So you can do pretty much anything you can dream up with a bot. Um, and I think that's, that's an important point to make is that uh, with the NPC, you're limited to what OpenSim has implemented as opposed to um, if you're using a bot like we're discussing, uh, there's a lot that you can do. So these are some of the examples that we've used a bot for. Um, and so some of these were, uh, the, the top left uh, picture is, uh, we used the bot to you know, kind of discuss with students where they were at, what they were doing. Uh, we used them as a tour guide. Um, in the top right, similar functionality. Um, we used them to you know, kind of talk about what ship they were on, where they were going, 
uh, what their objectives were, and had them move around. Um, in the bottom left, we actually used the bot as an instructor, so the students could, um, you know, ask what their objectives were. They'd be told what their objectives were, and if they got things wrong, uh, the bot can tell them, uh, you know, hey, you, maybe you should do this. Um, and then finally, on the bottom right, this was where we actually did uh, asynchronous teaching. Uh, for the students. And so the bots actually ran the classrooms. The students walked in, they would start a classroom session, and the bot would teach the entire class. So some bot capabilities. We've been talking about bots and what they, what they are and what they're not, but really what can the bot do? Um, so one of the things, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but next to me has been Alan. He's been very patient and quiet the whole time. Um, so if you, if you direct your attention to local chat, and just to remind you to please stay off of that for the time being, um, we can communicate with Alan, um, and he can respond back. So hopefully everybody's seeing um, his responses to us. Um, so not only can... Alan obviously log in and log out from Open Simulator. Um, he can respond by name, so he knew who I was. Um, we're not going to show following an avatar because I don't want to run around the stage right now um, and have him run around. But um, he can also gesticulate, so we can have him um, go ahead and wave to everybody. Hopefully, you guys saw that. So let me do it again, just in case. Um, so. Gesticulating is important. Uh, obviously, we use gestures when we're talking with one another, and having the bot be able to respond and gesticulate uh, is is important part of, of passing that Turing test and making people believe that he's real. Um, so I guess I'm going to chat with Alan. So Alan, where are we? Um, and he knows where we're at, so he says we're at the Open Simulator Community Conference. Um, so, Alan, why are you at the conference? So he's here to demonstrate his capabilities. Okay. Well, Alan, what are your capabilities? <clears throat> and you can see there, hopefully you saw that um, while he's also answering the questions, and carrying on a conversation with us. Um, he can gesticulate at the same time. Uh, there's a lot of questions that we can ask um, that are you know, not necessarily pertinent to our, our, our conversation at hand. Um, so Alan, what is, what is your favorite color? His favorite color is blue, that's interesting. Um, so you can see uh, just you know, simple things like what's your favorite color, some of the things that seem kind of innocuous or, or not important, um, those really add to him being a, uh, a intelligent bot, we'll say, but also one that can kind of carry on a conversation. Somebody might just see somebody standing around and just start a conversation, um, and so you kind of have to have that pre-programmed knowledge in there. Um, one of the other things uh, that, that we're talking about here on the slide is to provide relevant real-time data. So just being able to respond to what's your favorite color, obviously anybody can program that. Um, but uh, when we start to do things like, Alan, what's in the news? And you see he, he throws back a lot of information there. And, and that's really just to demonstrate um, what, what that is. And it's really the Google News uh, feed. So what we can do and say, what's in the news, we can actually have, have Alan go out find out something that's actually in the news, and he could then go in and, and kind of drill down and give you more relevant information. Um, so that was, was kind of, you know, all of it at one, one point. But um, the, the goal with that is to kind of, you know, show some of the capabilities of using real-time data. Um, one of the other things is, uh, Alan, what is the weather like in Fredericksburg, Virginia, where I'm at right now? Um, so he's saying currently it's it's cloudy and 78 degrees, and that's right. So um, we can we can pick any city, and he can figure out what the weather's like. So you know, if you give him a home location, let's say, and say, you know, Alan, you're in Fredericksburg now, um, and then somebody says, hey, what's the weather like where you're at? Then he can respond with the real data, and that 
kind of lends to uh, you know making the bot seem more realistic. Um, one of the other things that we have on the slide there is is um, obtaining knowledge. So what we can do is we can actually train Alan. Uh, so if he responds that he doesn't know something, we can actually tell him the correct answer. Uh, and another feature uh, is the admin feature. So what I can do is say, Alan, show me the admins. And there it gives me a list of, of the admins that we have. So uh, what that allows us to do is to, uh, to tell Alan to go away. And you can see he logged out and said goodbye. So um, with the admin functionality, what we're trying to do is allow us to do some of the, obviously, admin functionality. Um, and so a general user can come up, he can, he can talk to Alan, and he can ask all these questions, interact with them. But certain functionality we have reserved for admins, such as teaching, um, so that somebody can't teach him you know, something uh, profane or, or inappropriate or, or teach him something that's wrong. Um, so we have admin functionality for that. We can add admins. So if we want an instructor to be uh, an admin, then we can do that. And um, another thing that we can do is um, we can have uh, Alan log in and log out using the admin functionality. So um, that's, that's pretty much um, most of the functionality that we have right now. Um, and you know, if, if you want to afterwards or maybe during discussion, we can show you a little more of that. And I'm going to get Alan to log back in now so that he can be here for this conversation. Um, so uh, feel free to uh, feel free to to talk if you want in uh, in local chat now uh, if you need to. Um, but Alan might respond, and we're not sure how how Alan will respond. Um, so now I'm going to kind of discuss some of the technologies and libraries that we're using um, and try to give you more of an understanding of how this bot works and how he is, uh, is programmed. Um, so here, here's some of the technologies and libraries we're using. Uh, Alan's mostly written in C Sharp. Uh, he's using .NET frameworks. Um, we typically are using um, Mono to run him. So he's usually on a Linux server, so we're using Mono to uh, interact uh, or have him run on a Linux server. Um, and Dahlia, uh, Alan only responds to his name in, in a capital A. Uh, so you'll have to change that to a capital A if you want to talk to him. Um, we're using Lib Open Metaverse, which I'll go into in a minute. Uh, AMOL, which I'll also go into. Yes, he is very formal. Uh, and, and then finally, uh, we're using Apache uh, for, for a part of the uh, bot control that we're we're going to talk about. So um, let's get into some of these technologies. So LibOpen Metaverse uh, is actually a collection of .NET libraries that are written in C Sharp, and that allows us to interact with virtual worlds. So LibOpen Metaverse is sort of a um, what you could use to make a viewer. Uh, and so uh, the, Alan is, is acting like he's logged in via a viewer like you or I would. Um, that provides us with an API that lets us interact with the virtual world. Uh, we can log in, we can log out, and most of the actions that you as an avatar can perform. And so that's very powerful. Um, that that, that kind of contrasts with the NPC functionality, uh, where you're sort of limited to, a, to, to Linden scripting language. Um, but with this API, uh, Alan is, is basically a real, a real user at this point, as far as OpenSim is concerned. Um, and that allows not only him to behave like a real avatar, um, but we can program his behavior, and we can also interact with other programs um, that are that are not in the virtual world. And that's how we get our relevant real-time data. Uh, so AML, uh, I've probably mentioned this a few times. So, so what is AML? So AML, if you're not familiar with it, is an artificial intelligence markup language. That's very similar to XML. It's an XML-based language, and it allows for customized responses for, from a program. Uh, so what that allows us to do is to program Alan and um, allows me to you know, say, hey, hey, what's in the news? But I can also say, Alan, show me the news, um, and he'll do the same response. So we can actually program both um, a same, the same response for multiple questions 
and we can also do uh, multiple responses to the same question because when somebody asks you a question and you don't always answer the same way. Um, and then we're also using uh, program from Sharp uh, and this is an AML interpreter uh, that's used to interact with the lib open metaverse. And so that, uh, and somebody found that earlier actually and, and pasted it into group chat. Um, but but program sharp is is basically a an, an able interpreter that's written in .NET, which allows us to use that in our .NET program for Allen. This is a high level architecture, uh, and hopefully my um, pointer is showing up on the. Yep. Okay. Um, so at the top here we have the web interface, um, and I actually have a screenshot of that. Um, and um, yeah, Alan's saying some weird things now. Um, <clears throat> so the web interface allows us to log Alan in and out, um, and it also allows us to send messages as Alan. Uh, and and so we've we've kind of started to build more on the on the web interface uh, to provide more functionality, um, but but mostly it's for logging in and out. Um, the program Sharp is what I talked about earlier. That's how we interpret the AML files, and that's how we uh, get Alan's responses. So the bot program here in the middle actually uses program Sharp uh, when the bot receives a message. Um, he sends it through the program Sharp, and um, then that allows him to um, figure out his answers to it. Uh, we also have real-time data here on the right, and that is stuff like the weather. So we're getting that from Yahoo Weather. And uh, we also have um, the news from Google News, and we've also uh, been able to pull some other real-time data. And potentially, that's a, a, a future area of interest that we're looking at, and we'll talk about that some in the, in the future. Um, and finally, at the bottom is Lib Open Metaverse, and that allows us all of the the APIs to interact with Open Simulator. Uh, so logging in, logging out, uh, interacting with objects, um, allows us to uh, access inventory um, and interact with uh, and receive messages. Okay, uh, so this slide, hopefully everybody can read that. You may have to zoom in a little on the slide. Um, <clears throat> but, but this is sort of the bot control code. And I'm not going to go over all of it um, really detailed. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to, to message me. My contact information will be on the, on the last slide, um, and we can have a discussion. Um, but uh, basically, the, the login... Uh, function here is is how we're logging into OpenSim, um, and and you can see we have a seat location, and that's where we're going to log into. Typically, what we do is we have Alan log in and sit on an actual prim, um, and that allows us to do a little more uh, interaction with him and, and certain things within the environment, um, because part of our challenges is uh, when, when we log in as a as an avatar, uh, we have to have Alan be able to see what, what we see and, and do what we do as humans when we are in uh, an open sim. So typically, you log in as a viewer, and you're driving, you're driving your experience. But Alan is logging in just like you or I would, uh, and we don't have a way of doing that. So um, usually, we're interacting with him with prims. Um, and as you can tell, uh, you can see client network login uh, right here. Um, that is uh, basically where we, we have a um, configuration file, and we uh, put in the first name and last name just like, like, just like you would have. Um, so Alan is, is just like a real avatar would be. There's some interesting chat going on with Alan. I'm glad everybody is, is, is getting to enjoy to chat with them. Um, so the, the login is pretty standard. Um, the next part is, is the part of the web interface I was telling you about. So you can see at the bottom uh, we have a little screenshot. And we've, been, we've had close to six or seven bots uh, in one actual um, 
virtual world before uh, for one scenario. So, you know, Alan is, is just maybe one of those seven bots that we would have. Uh, and you can see, usually we have a web interface, we have a, a login at the top right, um, and then we have Alan and, or the name of the other bots. And we have their, um, their status. So either they're online, they're actually in uh, the virtual world, or they're offline or they're logging in. And then we have uh, you know, the ability to log them out or log them in, depending on, on what their status is. Um, and the, the code that you see here um, is just how we, um, how we see the, um, how, how we send the message to the PHP page that allows us to see Alan's current status or the bot's current status. Um, and so basically what we're doing is we're writing to a file and, and sending a message to um, the PHP page that, that gives, that Alan is giving to the PHP page. So, um, he, he is intelligent in the fact that he is the one that is sending messages uh, to the web page to say his current status. Uh, we don't rely on, on listening for uh, a, a process ID. Okay. Um, so now we're going to talk about detecting users. That was one of the um, features that we discussed earlier, um, and I, di I didn't really show that. And the reason is because that we turned that off for Alan for today, because as users get close to him and then as users are in the area, he actually responds to you by name. Um, and that is that is an important part of making him more realistic. So uh, we typically have two, por two parts to... Um, having Alan uh, detect users. And part of that is because, as I, as I mentioned earlier, when he logs in as a, as a typical avatar would, um, you or I would be able to see an avatar approaching us and we would respond appropriately to that person. Um, but Alan doesn't have eyes, obviously, so uh, we have to tell him that people are nearby. So the code you see here is part of um, a, a Lin scripting language object, so a prim with LSL script on it. And um, what we're trying to do is, is use the uh, LL sensor to figure out what's in the area. And so when something's in the area and an avatar's in the area, we actually send a message um, to Alan, and then he sends it through his code. And that's how we figure out who's around. So what this uh, gives us is the ability for Alan to initiate a conversation. So a lot of times when you you know are, are talking to uh, an intelligent agent, uh, you have to initialize the conversation. But with this, uh, when you approach Alan, he can say hello, my name's Alan, or, or whatever our response is at the at the time, um, and he can actually engage you first. And I think that's an important part of making this experience more realistic, um, because <coughs> a bot. An unintelligent bot, I would, I would say, um, only relies on, um, you know, being being pinged um, or or receiving stimuli, so to speak. Whereas with Alan, he can actually be engaging, and he can be the person that starts the conversation. So, uh, this is one of the features that we worked hard on just to to ensure that. And the next part is actually how we're detecting the users um, in Alan's code. And in Alan's code, we're receiving an IM from ourselves uh, or from the, the object that we just created. And so now Alan can get to the name of the person and can respond appropriately. Um, so that I think that's important. Uh, the next part is detecting chat. So obviously, uh, we've been using that extensively right now. And Alan has been responding to all of your chat messages, hopefully. Correct. It's been hard to try to keep up with both. Um, <clears throat> but um, this part is Alan receives a, a message uh, from the local chat. And then he goes through and parses it and figures out what he wants to do with it. So um, if there's any uh, chat that comes from the bot or the detection object, 
uh, and the detection object is what we use to uh, figure out who's around Alan, um, then he's not going to use that information here in this in this function. And, and we, we've seen that prims can actually start to spam Alan. So we don't want um, Alan to uh, respond to prim messages unless they're from us, so we instant message them to him. Uh, we just want Alan to respond to local chat, and that's what this is doing. Um, and one of the other things that we've noticed is um, if you don't um, make it so that Alan only responds to his name, um, and that's down here, Um, so if, if Alan doesn't respond, uh, if Alan just responds to everything, then you can get to a point where bots can actually start talking to bots and they constantly continue to talk. Um, so what we try to do is, is eliminate that possibility and we, we require the bot to be addressed by name. Um, so that is a little bit formal um, and that is a limitation right now and that's something that we can you know, potentially look at in the future. But for right now, we require people to address them and that's sort of how you would do it in the real world anyway. Um, so that's not really something we see as a downside. So this is some of um, the processing of AML. Um, and what, what we're doing here is actually showing um, how we're getting the Google News feed. So, um, First thing we do is we allow we, we, we program the responses into the AML files that we talked about earlier, uh, and and if it's something if it's if it's a special case, um, so if if it's the news case like we when we talked about when we said Alan what's in the news, um, we actually call a function in the AML file, and then we go here to this code, and so what this allows us to do is allow multiple questions. Um, yep, just like that, Justin. Um, so what that allows us to do is um, have multiple questions lead to the same response. So if you say, hey, Alan, what's in the news? He does that. And if you do, Alan, show me news, um, he does the same thing. Um, so, And that's sort of how a real person would, be, would respond. They understand that there's multiple ways to get the same answer. Um, and then that allows us to just program, you know, in AML, the different responses uh, or the same response for different questions. Um, and then the code that you see on the PowerPoint is actually how we're going and um, getting that information from the web. Um, and, and as I discussed earlier, part of, part of the, the, the benefit of using the system like we have now is the ability for him to get relevant real-time data. Um, you know, if you, if you ask a bot, uh, what's it like there? And, and they say, you know, I'm in a computer or, or whatever. Um, that's not as engaging as saying the weather is nice out or the weather is cloudy and stormy. Um, so when a user interacts with the bot and they get, you know, the actual results for the weather where they're at, um, that's really powerful and it's it it helps to uh, to 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 engage the person with the bot more. Um, same with the news. Um, so what's in the future? So some of the things that we've discussed um, at, at Tech Wizards is, is doing Facebook inter integration. Um, so a lot of people might not have Facebook, um, but I think the majority of people uh, at, at some point or another have some sort of Facebook. Um, and so why Facebook integration? Everybody's integrating with Facebook. Um, but for us, um, Facebook really gives us um, a lot of good information to be more engaging. Um, so imagine, if you will, you're, you're talking um, with Alan, and he says, oh, how's your brother? Um, so uh, that would be very, very difficult to do um, the, the normal way, I would say, or, or the... The, I guess the old way of doing things, um, where we would have to store information. Um, <laughs> Alan's brother is fair to partly cloudy. Um, where we would have to store information for each user. But if we could store a user's Facebook information one time, um, then we could go and get all the publicly available uh, information on Facebook about that person. And then that allows us to... Um, uh, use that information and be more engaging. So 
um, he could say, hey, uh, you know, I, how's your brother? Uh, happy birthday. So he'd know your birthday. Uh, he would know a lot of information about you from your Facebook if you put that information on there. Um, but I think that would be very powerful in, in giving a more engaging experience. Um, and, and, and he'd be able to, uh, you know, know your friends. So he'd say, hey, have you seen so-and-so lately? Um, and, and, and he'd also be able to talk to you about, you know, your interests. So if you like certain things or you have favorite movies or, or whatever, um, he, he can use all of that information and be a lot more engaging and potentially, uh, you know, I guess, uh, show the user that he's, he's more than just, uh, uh, responses that are canned. Um, similar to that is storing experiences with users. So if you're, um, you know, if you come and see Alan, uh, maybe he stores how long uh, or, or when, you, when you last talked to him and then when you see him again, he says, hey, I haven't talked to you in a while if it's been a certain amount of time. Or maybe he says, hey, I just saw you yesterday. Um, so maybe his responses change based on past experiences he's had with you. Um, and that sort of goes into emotions. Um, and, and so he, you know, if you're rude to Alan constantly, nobody be rude to Alan, but if you're rude to Alan constantly, um, maybe he gives you shorter answers. Maybe he's not as nice, not as forthcoming. Uh, maybe he doesn't greet you when, when you first come up because you're rude to him. Um, or maybe he's very nice to you if you've been nice to him in the past. Um, so that's, that's things that, you know, also provide a, a more engaging experience, obviously. Um, intelligent actions. So, um, you know, having Alan respond more intelligently um, is is obviously something we're always working forward, uh, working toward. But also having actions that are more intelligent. So maybe he goes and sits down if he's been standing for a while. Um, maybe he goes and sits down if you are talking for a while, and he suggests, "Hey, why don't we go sit down at this table?" Um, there's a lot of different actions that people do in the virtual world um, and I, I think that's important. Um, I'm getting... okay. Um, and finally, uh, more real-time data combined with responses. We've done news and we've done weather uh, and there's a lot more that we can do with that. Uh, and finally, uh, ignoring input errors. So if you spell Alan's name with capital A, uh, he responds. If you if you uh, call him Alan with the lowercase a, he doesn't respond. So uh, we can be smarter about that. Um, so hopefully we have a little bit of time for questions and discussions. Okay, we do have uh, we have about 15 minutes now, or a little bit less than that actually, uh, about 10 minutes maybe for questions and answers. Uh, actually, we're down to about five minutes, so <laughs> it's going to be short, folks. Uh, if you can go ahead and ask your questions. I'm reading K's. Give me two seconds. Um, and hey, uh, can we can we pause on asking Alan questions real quick while we take real questions, please? Um, so, Kay asked, for the purpose of training, have you integrated outcomes from online tests or quizzes? In other words, rather than ask Alan the weather, does Alan go into a test database to discuss wrong answers on quizzes or tests? Um, that's not something we're doing right now. Most of what we've been doing as far as um, training is more objective-based. So, um, you know, did you, did you meet this objective? Did you go here? Did you do this? Um, so we haven't done that yet. Um, that's definitely something that would be um, relatively easy to do, um, and it's definitely something where Alan could actually be the quiz um, quiz giver. Um, so Alan could actually ask questions. You could respond to Alan, and he could immediately give you feedback and give you say you know either it's right or wrong and give you the right answer. Um, so that's that's definitely something that's possible with this framework, um, and it's just not something we've explored yet for our purposes. And he did answer your question. I see that now. Are there any other questions?
I think everybody else uh, likes asking Alan questions more than me, which is fine. <laughs> All right, and at this time, then we'll we'll go ahead and uh, and take a break. And uh, I believe uh, Kenny will probably be here with Alan to uh, have any more questions afterwards. And uh, uh, thank you for all being patient and uh, being such a good audience and uh, not typing in the first section of the presentation. Um, we hope you've enjoyed this this session. I sure have. And uh, don't forget that uh, you can log on for more uh, sessions and times to get the answers you need at uh, http, p, http colon slash slash conference dot open simulator dot org. And please, when you do leave, don't all stand up at once. Uh, it's a little bit hard on the servers. And thank you for being such a good audience. Thank you, everybody. And actually, can I answer Doug's real quick? Uh, Doug had a question. Everybody still hear me? Uh, OK. Um, so Doug, we have not looked into alternate AI or behavior engines yet. Um, Mostly, we've been using AML because it's worked for us, um, and we're we're not we're not trying to. Um, I guess we're not trying to be uh, more intelligent than just trying to pass the Turing test and be engaging for the moment. Um, but that's definitely something that that probably needs to be looked at in the future. Um, and if we want to go, uh, you know, down the emotion path and and learning, um, we'll probably have to um, do that. Yes, definitely. Yeah, we are. Um, we are definitely interested in that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, if you have any other questions, um, feel free to uh, contact me. My contact information is on the slide. Uh, it's just Kenneth dot Allwine two L's at uh, tech dash wizards dot com. Um, you can also Google my name and, and find me on social media. Um, but we'll be more than happy to, to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, or you can give me a phone call. <laughs>